I love the way your pastor starts the service. He says this. You can say it with me. We are loving the Word, and we are learning the Word so that we can live the Word. Father, I thank you for your Word, your life-changing, changing, transforming, powerful Word. I pray, God, that every heart would be prepared right now to receive. And may it be a blessing, Lord, and may it be an encouragement. We give you this Word in Jesus' name. Amen. Last year at our conference, we called it climate. And the basic message of the conference was to say to you ladies, to inspire you and say, you can do this. Whatever you face that is absolutely impossible, when you look at that mountain and you say it's not going to move and it really isn't, that you know that you can climb this thing. And in climbing it, the mountain moves. Somehow, in faith, when we step out and say, I'm going to climb it anyway. I'm going to make my way up this health problem. I'm going to make my way through this divorce. I'm going to travel on through this disappointment. I'm going to climb it. And guess what? The mountain moved. And that was our theme last year. <clears throat> this year, <clears throat> we feel very, very impressed to go with the theme called um, Head Over Heels. Head Over Heels. Now let me explain it just a little bit. Our verse that we've chosen is called, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and all thy strength. The desire of our heart is that we would encourage women, you here, to fall completely head over over heels in love with Jesus. We need to be a church that is head over heels in love with Jesus, obsessed with loving him. We can't get him off our mind. He's on our mind when we fall asleep at night. He's on our mind in the morning. He's the answer to every situation. He's our go-to no matter what we face. I'm in love with Jesus. And we just feel that we want to restore if it is lacking, or we want to create if it isn't there, that a passion and a love to fall in love head over heels with Jesus once again. We believe that this will transform your heart and renew your mind, being in love with Jesus. So that's the theme of our conference this year. Everything you are in need of, ladies, absolutely everything, everything you want and desire, is found right there. All of the Old Testament comes to this one thing. Love the Lord thy God, Jesus said, with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all of your strength. That is the answer. Women, you amaze me. I know that you wear a lot of hats, don't you? You do. Think about all the millions of things you've got to be. I won't even list them. I won't take time, but you know you're everything that from a taxi driver to a chef to a baker to a preacher to a lover to a whoever. You, are, you have to wear every hat and play every role. But you know, you also wear a lot of shoes. Anybody out there love shoes? <laughs> I think so. Oh, Megan's got both hands up there. <laughs> We love our shoes, and it's a proven fact. When a woman gets up and she gets herself ready and she kind of, you know, just that sort of mundane day, but you put a little makeup on and you put on something nice to wear and you just feel a little better. I don't know if you can admit that, but I think that's pretty true about every single woman. When she fixes herself up just a little bit, she feels stronger and she feels better. But this morning I want to remind you of something, ladies. I'm going to spend the rest of my time reminding me, right, reminding you of who you are. Do you know you are full of the Holy Spirit? You sitting there in front of me, unless you don't know Jesus, you are full of the Holy Spirit and made in the image of God. Now, I want you to walk with me through some things that you'll become familiar with. This is a pair of high heels. And I want you to remember that you are made in the image of God and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And I want you to consider these to be something that you, when you walk in these, you walk with dignity. And you walk with some grace. And you walk with some, not just confidence, but godly confidence. And the Bible says that you are clothed. You are a woman that is clothed with dignity. And these heels represent some class. They represent being dressed up. They represent being a child of the king, a daughter of the Most High. And I believe, ladies, because you are filled with the Holy Spirit, that you can develop a good reputation, that you can set a good example, that you can watch the words that come out of your mouth, that they would have class and that they would have dignity and that they would rise to the standard that God has set for us with the words in our mouth. The Bible says that you are adorned with a gentle and a quiet spirit. That's the beauty, the inner beauty that God sees in you. He said, don't worry about all the other stuff, the jewelry and all that stuff. Be adorned with a gentle and a quiet spirit. And I believe that women that are full of the Holy Spirit are adorned, that God has dressed you with a gentle and a quiet spirit. You walk in grace because God's been gracious to you. You walk in humility because God has humbled you. You walk in mercy because God has been merciful to you. A woman clothed with dignity. Someone that other women want to emulate. That's who you are. We'll just leave that with a, a pair of heels. A little bit dressed up for the king, amen? But then there's another pair of shoes that women wear. And forgive me, I forgot to bring a picture. Not that one. <laughs> I forgot to bring a picture for this one, but it's a pair of running shoes. Everybody needs a good pair of running shoes. Amen? 1 Corinthians 9.24 talks about this. It says, women, I'm saying this part, you're full of the Holy Spirit. You can run to win. That's what the Word says. It says you can run to win. It says be trained. Be disciplined. The word says, run with purpose. Do you know that the word tells us that we are able to endure in running? You were made to go through what, what, whatever you are going through. God has made you to be able to endure. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. And ladies, let me just encourage you to tighten up those running shoes Get yourself trained and disciplined in the Word of God. Be serious about the race and run hard. Run hard in this race. Even when things get difficult, decide, I am a woman that is full of the Holy Spirit and I'm going to run this race well. I'm going to run this race with purpose. Hebrews 12 says, strip off every weight that slows you down, especially the sin that so easily trips you up. What trips you up? When you're rearing to go and you think you're ready, what trips you up? What triggers you and sets you back? What discourages you? What depresses you? What sin trips you up? He says, strip off every weight that slows you down. Whatever it is, take it off. He says that we do this, we endure by keeping our eyes on Jesus. When you strip off every weight and you keep your eyes on Jesus, you will endure. You will make it to the end. You will win the race. Amen? This is one of my favorites that ladies wear. You've already seen it. Good old pair of flip-flops. Now, these might look comfy, but flip-flops are actually really dangerous. They're really not a very safe shoe. James chapter 1.8 says this, Don't waver. For a person with divided loyalty 
Listen now, don't waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. This part makes me just really take note. It says, such people should not to, to ever expect anything from the Lord. Can you imagine? He says, don't flip-flop. Don't go back and forth. Don't be undecided about anything. It says, don't be tossed between doubt and between faith. Don't be tossed between defeat and victory. Don't be tossed by your emotions. Don't be tossed by hormones. Don't be tossed by false teaching. Don't be tossed by another woman's opinion. Don't be tossed by gossip. Don't get trapped in it. But be steadfast. Be immovable. Always abound in the work of the Lord and what you're doing. Ladies, don't flip-flop around in your faith. Don't do it. Grab a hold of that anchor and hang on. Do you know that flip-flopping can make you spiritually nauseous? It's going to make you sick. All this flip-flopping around undecided. No, you've got to be focused. You've got to be faithful. No matter what comes your way, you've got to be steadfast, focused, and faithful. It's one more boot that sometimes is good for a woman to put on. Every good woman can put on a pair of work boots once in a while. Amen? I know you've all put on a pair of work boots now and then in your lifetime. And women who are full of the Holy Spirit, and you are, you are full of the Holy Spirit. I, I just feel I need to stress that. Because I'm talking about shoes today, and I'm talking about walking. I'm talking about walking out your faith. I'm talking about running hard after God. You're full of the Holy Spirit. Don't doubt it. It hurts his feelings. It grieves him when you wake up in the morning and you put on your own feelings. You're full of the Holy Spirit, ladies. Open up your mouth and give your praise to God. He lives and dwells inside of you. He will walk this journey with you. I promise you. But women who are full of the Holy Spirit are not afraid to work hard. They're not afraid to put on their boots and occupy until he comes. They're not afraid to get busy in the kingdom of God because they are clothed with strength. Be busy in the kingdom of God. Be diligent. Be committed. This is not a time to pull back and to pull away from the work of the kingdom of God. Romans 16.20 says this. This has got to bless you. I want you to picture your work boots on. The God of peace will crush the enemy under your feet. I don't know what your enemy is this morning. I don't know what you're struggling with. But I know that you've got some work boots. And the God of peace can crush whatever is coming against you. Whatever your enemy is. Crush what's discouraging you. Crush what's deceiving you. Pull up your boots and jump in and say, I'm going to work for the kingdom. I'm going to work for the church. I'm going to love God's people unconditionally, no matter what, and for the good of the kingdom. I'm going to get my hands in there. I'm going to get my feet in there. I'm going to get involved, and I'm going to work and work hard until the day that Jesus comes. I want to give a little sideline here because when I say work, it means getting involved. It means being faithful. It means being committed. It means having a job in the church. It means doing something for God. Amen? But I want to warn you, and I just don't, this is not a warning, this is a, a thought. All the work you could do, all the committees you could be on, all the things that you could bring to the table here at Revive mean little to your pastor if you're not here Sunday and Wednesday. It means little. I mean it. 
It means little. And it's Sunday and Wednesday that we come together as a family. It should be more. It should be more. But it's Sunday and Wednesday when we come and we say, we are the family of God. We are the ones who know him. And we will work as a family together for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So, all that to say, come. Please come. <laughs> Bless your pastor. Last shoe. Ladies, you ready? Slippers. Is there a woman in this house that doesn't love a pair of slippers? <laughs> a good, cozy pair of slippers? Do you know that women who are full of the Holy Spirit, they have learned how to rest in the Lord. They have learned how to find comfort. They have found that place to run for peace, for comfort, to be renewed, to be rejuvenated. This is the place that we decide what we will wear on our feet. This is the place we will decide whether our feet will be shod with the preparation of the gospel. This is the place where we are renewed and rejuvenated, rejuvenated and refilled. It's that secret place. A woman full of the Holy Spirit understands she needs that secret place. She needs that place to go. Women of full of the Holy Spirit know how to rest and find rest in the Lord. In closing this morning, I want to remind you of our theme for this conference. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Fall head over heels in love with Jesus. Not with anybody else. Just head over heels in love with Jesus. Remember this morning that you are a woman. Take this home with you, please. You are a woman who has dignity. You're a woman who is adorned with a gentle and a quiet spirit. You are a woman whose mind is full of the word. You are a woman who is able to run hard for God. You are a woman who is able to work hard and rest well. That's who you are this morning. I want to encourage you. I want to bless you. You are that woman. But there's more. Just a little bit more. Because included in our theme is the rest, is the next verse down from that. And this may explain a little bit why if you're not overcoming, if you're not moving forward, if you're not growing in the Lord, this might explain it a little bit. It says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love each other. The word is full. I can't even tell you. Go through all the Paul's books. It's packed with this. Be kind to each other. Tender-hearted. Forgive one another. Don't speak evil against each other. Don't criticize. Don't grumble. But love one another. It says this proves when you love each other, it proves that you've passed from death to life. Now you know what that's saying. Think a little deeper. It's saying that that's, that's the proof. You say you're saved and you say you're full of the Holy Spirit. You say you've died to all of your sins and you've been brought back to life. He says, this is what proves whether you've really died and really been brought back to life. Your salvation is how we love one another. One of the most misunderstood, misinterpreted verses in all of the Bible is John 13, 35, and it's this one. It says, Jesus says, so now... I'm giving you a new commandment. Here's a new commandment. It says, love each other. He says, love each other. You should love each other, he repeats. 
And most people think that the world, the church, and the body of Christ is called to love the lost. Of course we love the lost. They think we're called to, to unconditionally love the person that's um, had an abortion or s- sinned in some other way or love the homosexual or, or, or reach out to the lost and love them. Show our love. Show our love. But that's not what it's saying. It says this. It says, your love for each other. You see, he's talking to the church. He's not talking to the world. Do you know why he's not talking to the world? Because the world will naturally come to the church when they see the church loving each other. It will be a natural thing. But Jesus is talking to the godly, the people, the body of Christ, the church. And he says, the whole world will know that you're my disciples. The whole world will know you serve me and me alone. This, the whole world will know you are a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, by how you love each other. Amen. Is that not mind-blowing? Amen. So this morning, I, as much as I encourage you to fall head over heels in love with Jesus, love each other. Amen. Deeply, deeply love each other. 